What is going on, people? It's Matt from Liquid Loans. And in this video, I'm going to be talking to two of my favorite people <coughs> in the Liquid Loans community. We're going to be talking about locking versus no locking in regards to the loan token. So with no further ado, let me intro Jesse and Haunted. What's going on, fellas? Hey, man. What's going on? Good, good, good. Good to see both of you. Thank you. So right out of the gate, before people go find another YouTube video, I just want to cover some real quick math on selling versus not selling. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go into some uh, some figures on locking versus not locking and some other things, right? But while I have everyone's attention, why is not selling so darn powerful? We'll just go through some simple math. Um, and, and we're going to go through some doublings uh, because doublings are not unusual, right? Hex did 15 doublings. Pulse, we all hope to do, you know, 100 doublings, okay? But just for, for ease of some of this math, we're just going to demonstrate what happens when you don't sell. Let's say I have $20,000. Let's say Haunted over there has $20,000. And Haunted wants to sell. And he's, whole, he's heard his whole life. You need to take profits. Uh, you need to get your initial out. Make sure you sell. Make sure you get your initial out so you don't lose any money. Well, it's kind of ironic that your whole adult life in investments, people keep telling you to sell. It doesn't make any sense because watch what happens. He's going to take his $20,000. When his $20,000 becomes $40,000, he's going to sell half his bag. What does he have? Now he has $20,000, right? And twenty thousand dollars. He has forty grand, but his initial investment is still only twenty thousand dollars. Let's say he holds on to it. He holds on to it. Let's say it it does a ten percent. It does a twenty percent. Whatever it does, it, it ends up doubling, and he sells it again. He still only has twenty thousand dollars. But guess what he just did to his coin count? He cut it in half, and then he cut it in half again. And each time he takes profits, he's cutting and mashing down his coin count smaller and smaller and smaller until he has barely any bags left. OK, and after 20 doublings, starting with 20 grand, the only thing he has to show for it is two hundred and twenty thousand dollars and barely any coins left. OK, now. I started with twenty thousand dollars and went through the same price appreciation. We're not even talking about loans. We're not even talking about collateral right now. I just decided I just didn't want to sell. I held my 20 grand and it turned into 40 grand. And I went held through the next doubling and the next and the next and the next. And after 10 doublings, my 20 grand has turned into 20 million four hundred and eighty thousand dollars. We went we held the same amount of well, I we 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 were together the same amount of time, starting with the same coins. I have my initial coins. I haven't lost them. I haven't uh, sold them off and got less and less and less every time that I sold. I simply held. He didn't. He had weak hands. He got rid of them. He has 220 grand to show for it, and I have $20,480,000 to show for it. Now, there are ways to collateralize and draw against that as that price appreciates so that not only can you avoid some taxes, not only can you keep your coin count, but you can actually make your coin count go up during that time. So maybe I don't have 20 million, 480,000. Maybe I actually have 30 million at this point. The numbers get insane. No matter how you look at it, you can look at it from doublings. You can look at it. Well, every time the price does 10%, uh, he decided to sell, and I decided to hodl. No matter how you look at it, holders win every single time. Okay? Had to get that out of the gate. People need to hear that. Next, we're going to talk about um, some differences between getting in early on a project um, and coming in later in a project. So, so haunted. And, and it's, it's in re yeah, go Sorry. ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, what 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 was Haunted's? I thought I thought you stopped there. I was going to say, what's Haunted's take on that? Because that's from the Haunted strategy, right? Where you you uh, you're selling one side is selling every time they double, 
and one side. So I wasn't even talking about the haunted strategy. He can talk about the haunted strategy, but I was simply holding and doing nothing, doing nothing Mm. at all. Maybe I used the haunted strategy. Maybe sorry, sorry, I, I was talking. Sorry, sorry. Maybe... I, I didn't mean the horse strategy. I was talking when it, he he showed another another graph to me, another spreadsheet where it was like two hundred million. Is that correct? Where you actually where you were using the haunted strategy compared to yes. someone who was running. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So what Jesse is saying is that we have a his coin count stays the same. Mm. Where if someone is selling, their coin count is going getting lower and lower, even though he's taking out um, profits. But his coin count is going down. The just stays the same. Mm. Um, and if he did the haunted strategy, the coin count, you know, stays goes up while Jesse stays the same. So if I did um, did do the haunted strategy, my coin count is going up and up and up and up. Yeah. As the price goes up, um, my value because I've got more coins, my value goes up faster. So I'm just compounding my my um, price appreciation. Sure, but in but in both in both scenarios, no one's selling. That's the good thing, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. They both yeah. win. So that's it. So let, <clears throat> let's imagine, let's just pretend your $20,000 was, um, you know, with a coin that started at like 10 cents a coin when you get it. So you had 200,000 coins. As you went through those 10 doublings, the seller who was able to get $220,000 he actually divided in two his coin count through those same 10 doublings, right? So how many coins does he have at the end of those doublings? Let's see, one. He only has 195 coins. That's mm. it. That's all he has left. And and every time he sells, it makes the next earnings that much harder for him. He has to wait even longer to get to the next doubling. And then... Mm he sells more and then it takes even longer and it keeps taking longer and longer and longer for him to realize any sort of profits. But then as soon as he sells too, like you might as well just cross off 36% and just like set it aside and just, because that has to go to your government for taxes. So like I, I gave the figure 220,000. That's not even, that's not even accurate. Like it's actually less than that. So 220,000, let's say your tax, you had to give 36% of it up. Um, so you were able to keep uh, 43, uh, what is that, 43%, um, 44%, um, 64%. So you only yes, get 140 grand. 140 like 140 grand that's all you got you started with 20 grand you ended up with 140 grand the other guy has over 20 million mm. and to jesse's point about never selling people might say oh how am i going to extract value that's when the liquid loans come in that we uh, be able to take out a loan and just go do whatever you want with it even if you wanted to go um buy more hex mm. buy pulse x whatever you like and still not lose that coin count they'll be locked in the vault um, when sure. someone sells to go buy pulse X or X, that coin count goes down and as the price appreciates, he's not gaining those X's anymore that he would have with those coin counts. 100%. I just want to address this question here because someone said, did anyone start with only $350, $450? I'm a little fish in this game. Yeah. Can you please cover smaller investors? And yeah. the thing is here, just, 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 just going over what Jesse just said, right? And what Haunted said, it's, not, it's about not selling. So even if you start with a small bag, I don't know if you saw the live i did with walrus the other day but he was talking about the genesis whale the god whale how he turned three and a half grand into 300 million right that's a small investment into obscenely life-changing wealth so of course even 300 bucks even 400 bucks invested in a good project early on you diamond hand it or you use liquid loans to extract value while you still hold on to your collateral of course over time, if you're going to be, if you're in this for the long term, you know, 12, 24 months and longer, yes, you can turn that money into life changing money. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So 10 doublings with 450 grand turns into $460,000. There you okay. go. But if that guy was to sell every time it doubled, uh, you know, he'd have. Um, $4,600 that he's extracted. 
and only four hundred fifty dollars in his bag. And his coin count is like cut in half ten times. So really, he's only got like what five grand, five just over five grand. If he had tried to, oh look, the price doubled. Let me sell. The price doubled. Let me sell. Like you, you can't make that much when you keep selling your bags. Like the whole trick in crypto is there's a there's a you have to get in early and then you have to hold longer than everybody else. And what's cool is if you just don't ever sell, you're literally holding past everybody else. You win. Yeah. yeah and the more people that use liquid loans for pulse to extract value, <clears throat> you can imagine what it will do to the price of pulse. So if um if you have a small bag Dollar cost averaging is um, whenever you can just buy more pulse because the more we take off the market and the more we, the more people that don't sell, the more price appreciation we're going to have. Mm. Like we've already impacted about you know ten percent, if not more, I think twenty percent of what um, the total sacrifices were for pulse. And there's still many people who want to buy pulse, so you could just imagine what the price appreciation would do with just just with the people that are in liquid loans now or in the chat. It's going to make a big difference. Of course, the more people that obviously, I mean, it's basic macroeconomics, right? The more people that hold an asset and the rarer it becomes, the more the price appreciation happens. But especially when you start using stuff like the haunted strategy and you've got that buy pressure as well. And of course, you know, it's going to it's going to expedite that. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about the loan token and the locking up, unless you want to talk about something else, Jesse, first. Or yeah, loan, loan token, token, locking it up, right? Because people are, people are going to have some choices to lock up their points or not lock out their points and people uh you know they're, they're like well i can i can get a multiplier bonus or i can get these things earlier and i can stake them for the fees right away okay and it's just a couple it's just a couple different scenarios and you have to you have to think about what the price appreciation of pulse might do during that time so <clears throat> let's say you decided um you are going to be an early participant and you get a stack of, you know, coins that you then immediately stake right out of the gate and you're earning the fees um, pretty early on in pulse chain, right? Now, if pulse appreciates in price, the fees will also appreciate in price because here's what ends up happening. People, people will put pulse into their vault they'll take a loan out against that pulse and they'll set their collateral ratio to whatever makes them feel good right or is safe for them right that could be 500 percent so let's say they started at a 500 percent collateral ratio but the value <clears throat> of pulse did 100x okay that literally means that they have a 50 thousand percent collateral ratio they're so heavily over collateralized at that point. Now, along the way, they might have adjusted the collateral, but the, the knee jerk reaction wouldn't be, oh, wow, look at my collateral is so healthy. Let me withdraw my pulse and go dump it on my own head on the market. That doesn't make any sense because you're already using the protocol. It's already working for you. So instead, you go from the other direction and you say, Wow, I'm at fifty thousand percent collateral. I should probably mint myself some more stable coins, so I don't have to pay the taxes on this. Okay, so what you end up seeing is the loans get bigger and bigger and bigger as the value of pulse goes up, and the loans get smaller and smaller and smaller as the value of pulse goes down, and that literally translates into the value of the loan token because holding and staking the loan token earns you the fees from the loans. So if Pulse is running up in price, the fees are getting bigger, it's more desirable to hold on to those loan tokens because you're just collecting more and more and more fees. They just keep getting more massive. Um, we don't think that Pulse is going to launch and then whatever price that it uh, starts at on the first automated market maker, it's just going to go down for eternity. That's not consistent with any other blockchain, okay? It's likely to appreciate. It could see a 100x, a 250x, an 800x, a 10,000x. 
um, like the, the range is very big comparing to other blockchains. And this blockchain should prove itself to be very good. Which means since Liquid Loans is launching very, very early in this blockchain, if you get this loan token also very, very early and you stake it, your fees that you're collecting are only getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger over time. As those loans, like, because the loans are just simply getting bigger. Now, mm. it's also harder over time to accumulate these loan tokens for a, for a number of reasons. One, because as Pulse goes up in price and the loan tokens going up in price because it's more desirable to have them, they're just simply getting more expensive. So it's kind of like the Bitcoin scenario. In the early days of Bitcoin, it was easy to get, you know, thousands of Bitcoin. It was so cheap. But now it's harder for new people to get thousands of Bitcoin, right? You can only get fractions of Bitcoin because it's just run up in price. The same thing will happen. If Pulse goes up in price and the loan token is going up in price, the same thing will end up happening to both Pulse and to the loan token. You'll only be able to get fractions of it. But there's other things that make it even more difficult to get a hold of these loan tokens. Um, there's an emission it's actually paid out as a reward to stability providers, but the rate at which it's paid out gets less and less and less and less over time. So you can try and go find them and you, you just, the, the longer you're trying to find them and acquire them, it's just getting harder and harder and harder. Simultaneous to that, the price is just running away from you. And then you figure out, wow, I couldn't, I couldn't get my hands on as many as I would have liked to early on. So that brings us all the way back to your initial question. Why would you want to lock your points? If you forget about the multiplier bonus for locking and you get a sum of coins and you stake them immediately, yes, it's very likely your perceived dollar value, you'll be able to get that back from just collecting the fees, okay? But that doesn't mean that that's going to translate into 2.5x your coin count because they it, like they literally get harder and harder and harder to get your hands on over time. And if Pulse is going up in price, these will go up in price with it. And it's just harder to get your hands on it. So what you'll find is like you can't. You'll never 2.5x your coin count unless you bring in tons and tons and tons of new economic energy or you just lock from the beginning. Just do a straight up lock from the beginning. Now, Hanan's gonna go through some math real quick after I go talk about something. Selling doesn't just apply to Pulse. It also will apply to the loan token. So for example, if the loan token did 100X and you say, wow, I can sell this thing and get some quick gains. Let's say you paid 10, your perceived value was 10 cents a, a coin, okay? And 800 X, so it's $10 a piece now. You paid 10 cents and you're collecting this amount of fees. But a guy who comes in at the same time, like at this point in time now, had to pay $10 to collect this same amount of fees. So it's literally a translation into the X factor of the fees that you're collecting. If you're an early participant, you could literally be collecting hundreds or even thousands of X's multipliers of the fees that later participants would be able to get. Honed, go through some, some of that math if you could. Just, uh, just what you was saying. For example, if um, say the uh, APR was 20% um, and there was zero X's, you, you know, you put $1,000 down, you would make um, $200 for the year. That's the APR for a thousand dollars. So say that the price of the loan token did a 10x, right? So now your APR is based on the new price of the token. So now now you, you should times that by you should times the APR by twenty by ten as well, which is two hundred percent. So you now for now uh, an early adopter who who bought in got in in the beginning did a 10x. And the API is 20%, your API is really 
and now you're making 200% on your initial investment. Mm -hmm. and the same thing goes if it's to a thousand, uh, to a thousand X. So that's 2000% you're really making if the APR was 20%. And if that was the case, like, you know, if you put a thousand dollars and the APR was 2000%, um, I ran the numbers before, I haven't got a calculator on me now, but I think it's about, you'll be making your initial investment daily. Um, I think it was half, no, half your, half your initial investment daily. If we, if the price of um, the loan token did a thousand X. Wow. That's, and just on an APR of 20%. And if you look at the other protocols, 20% isn't, um, uh, they usually hovers around 20, 30%. Sometimes mm. it goes a bit, little bit lower. Sometimes it's a little bit higher. Mm. Um, but if the loan token does a thousand X and your initial investment was a thousand dollars, you'd be making 500 bucks a day if you got wow. to a thousand X. And if you got to, if it was a hundred X, you'd be making, um, uh, so five hundred dollars a day, you'd be making fifty dollars a day. Hmm. And if you just did a ten x from that thousand dollar investment, you're making fifty dollars a day. Like, I mean, the common thread, the common thread again is is holding, isn't it? It's not selling, it's holding and delay, delay yeah, gratification. Sorry. Get in early, get into the staking pool, and and and, and... it's a benefit. Yeah, it's a benefit of being early because if, if you're if you're in early, the APR on what it is at the time, let's say a year, a year from now, the APR is 20%, but it's done 100X. Mm. Your APR is got to be timed by how many Xs it's done. And that's your real APR of your initial investment. Mm. And that's the reason why, you should, like, if you're making, um, if you put $1,000 down and you're making that, um, half of that daily, why would you sell? Mm. Like, and for you to buy that, it's $1,000 times 1,000, which is um, a million, I think. It costs yep. you a million dollars to buy those tokens then. So right. it, 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 if, would, if it would need to someone Dune, to buy a million dollars to get that. If people go to Dune Analytics and, and they look at liquidity, you'll see that they have like a daily um, APR, they have a weekly APR, and then all time av all time, all time average APR. <clears throat> now it fluctuates. Right now it's like I don't know, twenty or thirty percent or something. Sometimes it's forty. <laughs> when you look at the average, it's like 160, you know, five or 168 or something. That's just an all time average. Like the people who got in early are literally at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of percent return because it's just collecting the average for what everyone's getting. So, like the current participants, they're getting in and they're getting, you know, whatever, 30 or 40 percent return. Um, and that's where the sideways ETH price, right? Or sideways or like down. Some people call it a bear market. If this, if this <clears throat> protocol, if that protocol had launched at the bottom of Ethereum, like all of like everybody who's in it now would be up literally thousands and thousands of X on what they put in, thousands of X. But it's not. ETH has been just sideways for the almost a year now. Um. We also don't have any competition. Where's our competition? Where is it? Bring it. Anybody who's listening, there, there's like 25 different lending protocols over on Ethereum. And not a single one of them have we heard are coming over to Pulse Chain or excited or some of them have even said, nope, we're not interested. Okay, yeah. we're the only one. So I don't think that's talked about enough. I don't think that's talked about enough that there's so many competitors over on Ethereum, isn't there? Right. But on Pulse Chain, we have zero. At the mm. moment, I welcome any any competitors to come over, come try and play, try and compete. Um, so right now, zero competition launching at the bottom. You know, mm. when Pulsecoin launches at zero, there is literally not a better position that somebody could be in, but to be right where you're at right now. Mm. Haunted, I want to ask you about something that we you showed me briefly on our last stream and you on your spreadsheet, you also showed me you touched on how the fees at first, if you're in the loan staking pool, don't seem, you know, that that crazy. But as time goes on, they compound too, right? And you'd be earning quite high fees. Can we touch on that briefly? Okay. <laughs> Haunted rugged us. Okay. So ask me the question again. Okay. So we 
Haunted had on his spreadsheet when he came on the stream last time was it was about he had a, obviously had his strategy for doing the haunted strategy, but he also had something right. that was in, in regards to the fees and how they ratchet up. In, um, on on the oh he's back. Sorry, no no problem. So haunted, I'll ask you for the third time. On, when we were on stream last time, you had uh, a part of your spreadsheet was about the fees when you're in the loan staking pool and how yeah. they ratchet up. You know, they don't start straight away, but over time they compound and they can become very juicy. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Can, can and it starts up low and then the, more, the, the bigger the loans get, it just gets higher and higher. It, it just spikes. Mm. Like I usually say the fund starts at a 10,000 X. <laughs> so, I mean, uh -huh. hold, holding that fee generating Think, token. Yeah, exactly. Token. Yeah, good for anyone, isn't it? The longer you hold it, the more returns you make from it over time. So like Jesse was saying, that the loans get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and if you're doing the haunted strategy, because you're compounding, so the, the price of Pulse might have done a 1,000x, but you've really done a, um, you know, a, a, I think it was about 4,000x uh, um, 4, or 5,000x. So if you're doing the haunted strategy, you're just compounding that and your loans just get bigger and bigger just from going a thousand percent collateral mm. so you are like you, you, know, you saw that if you go back to the excel sheet you just look at it you just see it grow 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 it's just like starts off small and just spikes like sure sure so we, so we know we know people you can't stop people wanting to be you know traders or or, or some dj behavior but you know if you're listening to us for a while and you're you're understanding the basics of the loan token obviously it's not a trading token, is it? It's a token that you want to get your hands on, either through through maybe getting some points with a sacrifice, either buying it on the market, providing stability, and then locking up in that in that in that staking pool and and long term collecting all those fees. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And I'll tell you one thing that I find fascinating about the loan token is that if nobody ever created the liquidity pool for that token, you'll still be making those fees. You be, you can you can go spend what you make from that loan token mm. wherever you like. Like if you if you were to stake uh, other protocols, you need a liquidity pool in order for you to sell that into mm. something. But with um, the loan protocol, with a loan token, you're getting stable coin, and you can go spend that. And it won't do anything to the price. It won't harm the price. So the loan token, the the yield you're making from it, if you went to sell that, it will not harm the price. Mm. And that's another. That's probably another reason why you keep you see go up or to the right because people just be collecting, are they compounding to buy more, or they'll be spending it elsewhere like on hex, more pulse, whatever they like, put it into the stability pool. It's free for you to do what you want with it, and you can keep it forever, as long as the um, pulse chain is running. The loan token will keep running, and liquid loans will keep running. It's yeah. all immutable. I want. I want to. Um, I want to address some of these uh, yeah. questions real quick. I see. I keep seeing it pop up, and it's not related to the loan token or anything. But um, I do want to address it because it looks like he's having trouble having this question answered. This so, one. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> so when you get a loan, it's literally a loan. You haven't sold. You haven't disposed of your asset. And I'm, I'm speaking from uh, from my experience where I live. I happen to live in the United States. All right. Um, yes. To get out, you may have to swap that for Pulse or swap it for Link or USDC or something that you can either go through a bridge or go straight to an exchange, okay? But check it out. If I've got $10,000 worth of USDL and I swap it for $10,000 worth of USDC, uh, there's no capital gains there because it's literally like value for like value. Where's the price appreciation, okay? And then if I took that USDC and I swapped it for $10,000 worth of hex, and then $10,000 worth of ETH, and then $10,000 worth of Bitcoin, and whatever else, there's literally no gains unless I did a swap, held on to it for a long period of time, or a period of time, and it ran up in price or something. Uh, and then, you know, of course, I'm going to have to, all along the way out, from your loan, you will have to 
record your games. But the chances are, if you're if your goal is to get USDL and immediately get out, like that that'll take less than five minutes to get it back out to Coinbase. Like, there, where's your gains, dude? You don't have any gains, mm. mm. and it's on you yep. to, to 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 record that. Like, I've sent uh, lots of money to my bank. Like, people are getting millions and millions of dollars out of crypto. The bank doesn't like. Uh, flag your account and like come people come pound on your door and say um are you calculating all this no once a year you calculate all that on your forms and you submit your tax documents saying this is where everything came from hmm. sure I, th I think what you just, you just touched on is really good and i want to you know extrapolate a little bit because this comes up a lot on streams how do we get out and first off when pulse chain goes live and there's a bridge of course you're going to take your your USDL and you can swap it for something else, bridge it over to Ethereum and then send it to an exchange. But once, obviously, and at the moment, we're in, I mean, there are talks going on, obviously things take time, but there are talks going on with having a direct on and off fiat ramp. So of course, at first the bridge is going to be needed, but after that's taken care of and we have direct uh, USDL or pulse to exchanges with fiat on and off ramps, that's how, that's, that's how easy it's going to be, isn't it? You're going to go take it straight to an exchange, exchange it, and then like that. that's it. Send it straight to your fiat off ramp, swap it for fiat. Mm. Done. Easy. So, you know, hey, with the low token. I was Sorry? just going to say, look at like, you know, Richard Hart just bought a diamond with crypto, you know, mm. with millions of dollars. The future of crypto, you know, where we can spend our crypto to buy things. Is this going to grow over time? So we might not have to go to a fiat on ramp. We could probably buy things um, straight with our crypto, you know, down the track. But it's growing and growing. We hear these stories over the time. Uh, over, like we hear these stories every time. Like people are buying houses now. People are buying ca um, cars. It's just growing year by year. So I think in a few years' time, it's going to be something that we're not going to even worry about. We're just going to buy things straight from our crypto. 100%. I mean, there's cu there's countries that I keep an eye on because I lived in Southeast Asia for quite a while and Thailand's one of them and they're really crypto friendly. I mean, airlines are taking payment in crypto. Uh, some real estate places are taking payment in crypto. So I, this isn't going backwards, right? This is only going forwards. And of course, different countries and different jurisdictions are going to have different takes on it. But like you said, I mean, even a peer-to-peer -peer, you know what crypto was invented for if you find someone who you want to buy a car or property from and they want to do it through crypto bam it's just you you guys making the payment making the transfer together so i think uh, he's in, got in a, future, you won't even need the exchanges yeah he's got another question how do you get a loan through liquid loan have it deposited into your bank account without transferring it to another coin well until bank of america or hsbc or any of these other banks take crypto and are part of the blockchain like that's impossible you can't send bitcoin to bank of america and go spend it like you you log into bank of america and oh there's my bitcoin balance that's not a thing yet so you do have to swap crypto you have to like if you're a hexagon you have to swap your hex for something else send it to an exchange and then swap that for fiat there's these things, these fiat on ramps. The way they work is usually it's just a pool of fiat, okay? And you send your crypto in, which burns itself and then releases fiat to your bank account. Like this is just how it works. So you're gonna have to swap into something, just like you'll have to swap your pulse into something that your fiat off ramp accepts, your Coinbase accepts, or your crypto.com accepts, or whatever. Uh, pulse isn't gonna be on crypto.com or Coinbase right away. All right. So just look at what you can. You might be able to go through a bridge back to Ethereum or AVAX or Phantom Chain or something like that. Just pick up something that your fiat off ramp like Coinbase carries, swap into that, send it there and then uh, sell it for fiat and and click the button extract to my bank account. Hmm. Yeah, over time, it will just grow and grow. There'll be different ways of extracting value off the blockchain, um, you know, like if when Matic or all the other networks, when they first launched, they had to go back over the bridge onto Ethereum back to an exchange. Exact same thing happened then. You know, now some some uh, exchanges accept stuff from Matic and 
um, phantom and stuff like that. So it grows over time. It just needs time. Absolutely. I mean, like anything in life, when there's a service to provide and there's enough people, people will start providing that service, right? So the more the Pulse chain gets adoption, the more wallets that hold Pulse. And if, if someone can see a business opportunity, like an exchange where they can take Pulse and swap it for fiat and what's not, it, you know, it's going to happen. But first things first, we need the yeah. blockchain. We need liquid loans, the bridge, right. and then obviously we'll right. take it from there. Right. Bearded Saint says, so basically you have to swap from stable to stable? Um, not necessarily, no. Coinbase has a big list of like 50 or 60 coins that they accept. Crypto.com's list is even bigger, I think. You literally just have to swap into one of those things. You'll have to do that with your pulse if you're a seller. We talked about the negatives of being a seller. Um, you'll have to do that. With, like, that's just how you get out. That's how you get out through Hex or whatever. You can swap into ETH. You can swap into Matic or AVAX or phantom coin or whatever else after going through a bridge i actually recommend going through bridges to some of the cheaper blockchains you know than ethereum to avoid some of the gas fees but just pick something that's on um uh, coinbase for example and just send it like it doesn't have to be a stable coin hmm. um okay but let me back up what's the simplest way if you're holding usdl because I, I do want to make this very clear if you have usdl in your uh, in your metamask you say, what do I do next? Well, once we have our fiat off ramp established, it's simple. You just send there and then like, that's it. Like extract back, extract fiat back to your bank account. Right. But we're not to that point yet. Pulse chain doesn't even exist. So pulse chain has to exist. And then we can establish a fiat off ramp after we, after liquid loans launches. All right. Now, so initially, you're just going to have USDL and you say, what do I do now? Well, you go straight to PulseX or, or first find a bridge and see what's bridgeable. And you see, oh, here's a big list of coins that I can bridge over to Ethereum chain. Maybe Pulse is on that list. Maybe USDC is on that list. Maybe it's Link or something. Okay. So take your USDL, go straight to PulseX and swap for one of those bridgeable tokens. Go through the bridge with that to ETH chain and then send from there that same make sure, find a token that's on uh coinbase okay and then swap into the coin that coinbase accepts and then send to coinbase okay and now you're almost done right it's literally like six or seven steps but it's the same way for every single coin on the entire pulse chain there's mm. thousands and thousands of things on the pulse chain. And until there's a direct fiat off ramp, like you're you're literally gonna have to swap into something that the bridge carries, go through the bridge, then swap into something on Uniswap over on ETH chain or wherever the Coinbase carries, and then send to Coinbase, and then sell for fiat, and then click the button to extract that fiat back to your bank account. I mean, that's crypto as we know it at the moment you know mm -hmm. and you've got to swap stuff for stuff and when people bring that up like how do you get out of usdl the same way you get out of hex the same way you get out of any coin stuff has to be swapped for something that the exchange will take and then you can send to there and then ch ch change to fiat so you know uh, like I, like i said at first there'll be a few steps when the when the bridge goes up there'll be a few steps and then of course at some point there's going to be enough pulse holders there will be a, a direct off-ramp and then there we go. We just send it straight to an exchange and it's easy. Right. Somebody said there's going to be a fiat off ramp for Pulse quite quickly. I do want to address that real quick. Uh, who said that? Red Squirrel? <clears throat> yeah, cool. But you know what happens? If you have Pulse gains and you send your Pulse to a fiat off ramp, and sell for fiat and you had a lot of gains in that post you just had a you know a, a capital gain you better record that and do, do the right thing with your taxes right so we can only hope no expectations that some of those same fiat off ramps also carry usdl so that you now have a choice do you want to be a seller or do you want to send acquire USDL, 
and avoid the tax problem and send the USDL to that same off ramp. Mm. We're going to uh, do what we can to help everybody out. Yeah, of course. I mean, again, it's going back to that same argument. If you didn't have to sell, why would you? Why would you incur loss of your coin count, uh, a capital gains tax, you know, depending on where you're living, how much that's going to be, when you could just use liquid loans, still hold on to your pulse and and gain liquidity? It, it really is a no-brainer. And obviously, you know, no admin keys, no governance, no interest, no time repayment schedule. You know, it's so flexible that the only thing that you have to do is make sure you're collateralized safely if you want to hold on to your pulse, which is, you know, be over 150% at all times. But obviously, way over that's much more advised. 300%, 500%, 1,000% as Haunted yeah. has a new strategy. Yeah. So Haunted, maybe for the people that don't know about the strategy, give us a quick overview of how that looks. You know, the, the, main, the, main, the main tenets of it. The main thing is just always stay at 1,000% collateral. And when um, when you're uh, above, say say you hit a thousand one hundred percent, go buy some pulse, bring it back down to a thousand percent, put it into your vault, and wait for the next ten percent move. Mm. So you just keep when the price goes back up, once you're back at a thousand, uh, one thousand one hundred percent collateral, go buy pulse. Uh, sorry, take a loan out to a thousand percent collateral, buy pulse, put it back into your vault, and you're just compounding it as the price goes up. So that way your your coin count just keeps going up. And, and the good thing about all these strategies is depends on, you know, what's going on in the market. I think Haunted, your one's great, you know, especially if we're in a bull market and the price is going up, you can keep rinse and repeating that. But there's many other strategies. And if you want those strategies from Hodperl, Red Squirrel, Hexicat, they're all in the uh, Liquid Loans Telegram channel, t.me forward slash Liquid Loans. So if you go to the pin messages, you can find all the strategies there for sure. I can give you a fun new one if you want today. Let's go. It's... Taking a 30% loan, yep. putting it into your um, vault, sorry, yep. put it into the stability pool, and then take out 10% of that and buy Pulse and put it into your, put into your vault. And then when the price goes to up 10%, bring it back, take out a loan at 333% collateral, mm. put that into your stability pool, and then take 10% out. If you just keep doing that, you'll have a, a good, um, you'll get the price appreciation. And you have a good amount of um, stable coin in the stability pool as well to spend or pay back if the if the price drops or do what you like with it. Okay. So okay. So, so you got you got you got some money in there just to make it <coughs> and, and and getting more loan token. That's great. Well, yeah. listen, guys, this, is, this has been great. It looks like right. Jesse's ready to close us out with a yeah. song. So, yeah. Somebody made a comment on a different stream that uh, that guy doesn't even play. That guy doesn't even play guitar. They just hang on his walls or something. Um, okay. So you so, want to show us how it's done, right? I'm never selling, no. I'm never letting my pulse go. I'm holding out forever. Yeah, I'm taking loan. Zero interest, yeah. No keys. Whoa. Amazing wealth creation in the liquid loan seals. I'm never selling, no. I'm never letting my pulse go. I'm holding out forever. Yeah, I'm taking long, no. You're gonna be rich, boy. I mean, that is come on. If, you, if you're not, <laughs> <laughs> if you're not hyped by that, you get your lighters out, you're waving side to side. Come on, so that, that's a great way to close this out. I think this comment is good here from Toby. So, you're telling me I can stake my loan, stake my hex. Stake my pulse X, delegate my pulse chain, and send my earn USDL to a stability pool all for passive income. That is correct. That's what we're looking forward to. Right? Correct. Yeah, right. It's exciting. Listen, SAC phase is right around the corner. Um, if you're not ready now, it's almost too late. All right. Get ready. 
It is right around the corner any moment now. We're going to announce that. If you're not in the Telegram, t.me forward slash liquid loans. Uh, last minute questions. If you're on the fence or whatever, listen, go in there. There's not a single question that's left unanswered. See you there. That's it. Thank you, James. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Guys, another banger of a live stream. Jesse and Haunted dropping the math and the truth bombs on liquid loans, on pulse, on staking, on the stability pool. So if you like that video, guys, do hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you're notified every time we drop new videos, which is pretty much on the daily on the Liquid Loans channel. You can also get more of your questions answered like Jesse said, in the Telegram channel, t.me forward slash liquid loans. Also head over to the website, liquidloans.io forward slash refer for the referral program. If you want any more info on that, hit the like button, share the video with someone who you think it may benefit. Thanks for watching and I will catch you on the next one. Have a great weekend, everyone.